And good day to you. This is uh, meteorologist Nathan Moore here with your tropical forecast. Uh, as always, you can go to youtube.com Fox 26 Houston and you can find us there. We have one every day, usually sometime around four o'clock central time. Um, so for those of you watching elsewhere, uh, you can definitely access this anywhere. And there's our QR code also off to the lower left hand corner of the screen. Now here's what we're looking at. First of all, climatologically speaking, we are actually September 10th, which is today. We are officially at the peak of it, September 10th. And here we go at the very top. Now we begin to slowly see a gradual decrease in activity. And of course, as you remember though, we've still been fairly quiet this year for the most part. Here's our name storms uh, across the board. The last one we had was Earl, which I'll show you that in just a second. Next storm will be Fiona and then Gaston after that and then Hermine. Um, beyond that. So we have a lot of storms here. Of course, they did predict. We did predict a very active season. It's beginning to pick up, but still hadn't been quite as active uh, as anticipated. However, let's look at this though. First of all, I want to show you the sea surface temperatures across the Gulf of Mexico. These are buoys that the uh, government provides, and this is something that uh, is shown and you can see very warm temperatures still. A lot of that water out in the Gulf of Mexico especially has been undisturbed. So that's why a lot of these water temperatures are in the lower to mid 80s, even a few pockets of upper 80s across the central Gulf. A little cool spot here. There's been some rain across the northeast Gulf, so that's kind of cooled the waters down some, but still a lot of energy out there. But good news, though, is the Gulf of Mexico is very, very quiet uh, right now. I'll show you that, though, in just a little bit. First of all, post tropical storm Earl. Now, uh, I should say post tropical Earl is 85 miles per hour with the winds. What it's doing is just kind of meandering across the northern Atlantic. Really, the only havoc it's calling, causing are flights across the northern Atlantic, also uh, creating some problems for cargo ships and things like that across the region as well. 85 mile an hour winds is moving from the north northeast at around 10, and the pressure there is at 964 millibars. We're going to shift gears real quick. Here's what the National Hurricane Center is showing uh, for uh, just off of Africa. Now this coast, uh, the area is moving off the coast of Africa has 0% chance the next couple of days. However, though, as we go in the next five days, it does have a 30% opportunity for development right now, though, just from what we've been seeing with the models and the trends, it looks like it again, it's going to be an open Atlantic type of situation going on. Now here's what I want to go back to Earl and I want to show you this. This is what we call kind of a it's becoming extra tropical post tropical. That's why they call it that. It really doesn't have much tropical characteristics for a tropical storm tropical system. Usually a warm core uh, system. This is now becoming a cold core system and becoming more upper level driven. So all this there's really not much of a center. The center is down here, but all this is beginning to kind of spread up towards the north cooler waters as well. And that's why we'll begin to see Earl. It, it's making that extra tropical transition right now. Now across the Gulf, as I mentioned earlier with the water temperature, as you saw close to Florida in the mid to upper 70s, this is why this is just a trough. Uh, nothing surface based, nothing tropical right now. Something that may need bear watching over the next couple of days, but there's a lot of shear out there. And what we talk about shear, of course, on occasion, you hear us talking about that upper level winds that tear these thunderstorms apart when they do try to develop. And that's why you're seeing a lot of these uh, sort of streamer clouds kind of move from southwest to northeast. That's why really not much development is expected with this activity. Look across the Atlantic though, just very, very quiet, not much going on. There's that uh, the system off Africa that I mentioned earlier that is supposed to move off over the next day or so and could potentially develop but, and a lot of blue waters out there across much of the tropical Atlantic. And again, here's what I'm talking about. Really not much going on. There's still a lot of what we call like kind of volatility out there, a lot of shear. So nothing is really going to be able to develop across any of this area. And as I mentioned also across the Gulf of Mexico, you will notice this little trough that is digging in across the, this, the area of Texas and even into Louisiana. That's why we're seeing some lower humidity levels in Texas and Louisiana, but also the rain and thunderstorm activity across eastern Gulf of Mexico and also the southeastern portions of the United States. 
That's why I don't think we're gonna see anything develop across the Gulf is because this upper low right here, a lot of shear, that's why I don't think we're gonna see anything really develop across that region. Here is K. Now, this is um, actually an interesting stat. Since 1988, only about three storms have made their way as far north as K has. Um, so uh, this is no longer a named storm, but it's still creating some clouds, even a little bit of shower and thunderstorm activity across uh, Nevada and also across Southern California. This will continue, but once again, because of the cooler waters just off the coast of California, it will continue to dissipate, but much needed rains for portions of Central and Southern California, helping ease some of the heat that they've had and also the wildfires that they've had across the area as well. All right, a lot to talk about there, but I even have more to talk about there. Also in the future there, uh, facebook.com, you can go to Moore's Meteorology page. You can follow me on Twitter uh, at Nathan underscore weather. And you can always follow us here on uh, Fox 26. And also you can always access our Fox 26 app uh, in the app store. Once again, we'll have an update tomorrow, again, at, after four o'clock central time.